Hello, welcome to Football 360. It's a new year and a brand new season of 360. On the first edition of 2013, we bring you the highlights from the night series final between Bayswater and Coburn. We discover some raw talent at the girls' day out and the African Nations Cup explodes into action. But first, Chris Coyne and Scotty Miller have enjoyed individual success at the highest level. They're both former glory players and now mark a new breed of coaches in WA football. Coyne taking over the helm with last year's Premier's Bayswater, while Miller has helped resurrect Coburn into top flight football. Both have faced off in the night series final. Macedonia Park laid the backdrop to the night series final between last season's premiers and newcomers Coburn. The Basie boys in stripes were supported by their legion of fans, but Coburn weren't to be intimidated. They were out to prove a point, dominating a lot of the ball early on. 2011 Footballer of the Year, Steve Burton had two good chances to put Bayswater in front just before half time, but some magic from Coburn keeper Dejan Alexic kept his side in the match going into the half-time break. In the second half, Bayswater took the lead after 60 seconds when Burton flicked the ball into the back of the net from a cross on the left wing. Basie pressed on and should have scored at least two goals within the next five minutes. Seven minutes from time, Trent Kay fired the ball home from close range and doubled Bayswater's lead. <laughs> Coburn didn't give up and in the 87th minute, Eamon McNillis shot low past Gianni Papalia from the edge of the penalty area. But it was too little, too late. Bayswater held on to celebrate the victory. First coaching role and uh, you're, uh, you've been crowned night series winners, it's not a bad start to 2013. Yeah and that's all it is, it's a start, you know, I said all along we wanted to go out and try and win it but it, the most important thing was getting minutes into the boys legs and trying to impress my ideas onto the players so it's, it seems to be working but we've just got to do it more consistently now. I don't think it was a convincing win and I don't think it was comfortable either, you know, Coburn credit to them kept fighting to the end and obviously we had chances that we didn't take but, you know, that's how football pans out and some days we'll get them and, and some days we won't but, um, you know, just getting across the line tonight was a relief for all the boys to, um, you know, to experience winning something after going so close last year. We were outplayed by a very good team tonight and 2-1 uh, looks good in the, in the archives but I think um, Bayswater are better than that today. It's great for our boys, we've come up from Division 1 and this is what it takes to uh, not only compete but stay in this league. When we won the Division 1, all we want to be is competitive. Once we can get a bit of respect because you've got to earn it, then we'll try and, um, try and do something else. On the first edition of Football 360 last year, we profiled a young, talented footballer by the name of Daniel De Silva. Well, as we revealed last year, Danny is a star in the making and has now signed a contract with Perth Glory, making his debut against Sydney and Alessandro Del Piero. Congratulations to the Glory for their 2-1 win this week over Sydney and congratulations to Danny. Women's football is growing year after year and the Girls' Day at Carnival is proof that young females are developing an unrivalled passion for our beautiful game. At the moment we've got about 130 uh, to 150 participants. It's just about getting girls who love the game, um, getting them together, playing football, what they love doing, um, and also getting those girls who probably haven't played the game, getting them started and hopefully getting them to participate in a sport that you know is getting bigger and better in, in women's football. Meeting new people, socialising, and I think it's just having, um, playing at this stadium as well is fantastic and that would be a big thing for these young girls. But you know, it's for them, again, it's you know getting to, to know the sport and also it could be a talent thing to go into the next level into our skill acquisition programs, NTC and further on the track Perth Glory and the Matildas. For any girl who wants to sort of go the next step, if they're here today, what do they need to show? What do they need to do? Oh look, you know, it's not about you know what they have 
uh, on the ball, it's about what they have off the ball as well, you know, it's their character, how they socialise with other people, how they play the team sport, you know, and that's little things that we look at and hopefully, you know, once we see that we can invite them down to our trials and, and see what they do. We're at the Girls Day Out today, why was it important for you to come? Just to work on some skills and meet new people. My favourite player is Cristiano Ronaldo because of his skill, control and touch. I'd like to make Matildas one day. And what do you think you need to do in order to play for the Matildas? I think that I just need to keep up my skills and keep practising. Addiction starts with a choice. The team at Football West has been pushing hard in recent months for our home of football. CEO Peter Hugg explains what the concept is all about. For football's sake. For the sake of our registered players. There's 37,000 of them. The home of football campaign is essentially a rally call. It's a rally call to all those who are members of the football family, all their friends and associates, and that means players, mums and dads, coaches, spectators, fans of the game, to really get behind our push for state government funding. Home of Football is essentially a state headquarters. Our discussions to date and our plans for the concept is, uh, evolves around three components currently. First of all, it's a centre of excellence. It's a training, training facility for all of our top teams, Perth Glory men's and women's teams, our NTC state representative teams, our young skill development uh, programs and so on, but also for the community. We then have in mind a small boutique uh, stadium of uh, three, four, five thousand seats where we, we would play all of our key matches in the state leagues, various representative teams as well, anyone who visits the, the centre and, and Perth for pre-games training or for, for uh, training camps. And then the third component is a, an administrative headquarters. We basically operate out of a, a, a tin shed here at Gibney. We're separate to Perth Glory. We're trying to bring the two organisations more closely together. And so this will essentially be the office space for both organisations. This is not just a home for Football West. This is a home for football, the whole of football. As we've seen with many other sports, whether it be Rugby House, the Athletic Stadium, the rowing facility down south, the basketball, netball centres, gymnastic centres and, and so on, is that if we can have a home it, that galvanises the sport, that brings everything together, it can be more efficient, more cost effective. But I think from a, from a sports perspective and, and the whole of sport, it provides that centre of excellence and that state headquarters that everyone should be uh, proud of and, and get behind. We saw recently the talks of, of Liverpool coming to Perth for anything up to 10 days. And we can really make this a training facility that utilises the perfect weather and the, and the environment that we have here in Perth as a real point of difference between, say, the East Coast and, and uh, what we have on offer here. There isn't anyone involved in uh, football, uh, as I said, whether a player, coach, referee, uh, administrator, volunteer or, or a spectator who won't benefit from this, uh, this concept. We've ticked many boxes, we've kicked many goals, um, if we can say that in terms of our programs. We're continually producing the best players. And now what we really need is uh, the, all of WA to get behind the sport. We've identified a number of sites that are suitable throughout the Perth. And clearly it's, it's just a case of um, getting a check, a means by which we can pay for it. We want all members of the football family to uh, get behind the campaign. Uh, it's very, very simple, is that they should uh, log on to homeoffootball.com.au. By logging on to that website is that they will see a very simple petition by clicking a button. A message will go to the Premier, the opposition leader and indeed all leaders of, of the various government parties. And that will generate a great deal of interest and, and get the uh, politicians uh, standing up and taking notice. There are other means by which we can spread the word through our social networking uh, sites, Facebook, uh, Twitter and, and similar. The most important thing is to share the message, is to get it out amongst family, friends, anyone involved in the game so we get uh, as, as big a response as we can. Football needs a home. Football deserves a home. Every family needs a home. For football's sake.
The African Nations Cup has been a crowd pleaser for years and this year was no exception as Congo aimed for back-to-back -back champions as they took on South Sudan. Who do you think is going to win today? Both team really good, but I would say probably 2-1 um, to um, Sudan, South Sudan. This is from Congo, they're going to win. 2-0, final score. I think Congo because I'm Congolese myself. South Sudan because they won the new, new World Cup. Congo will win because it's a great team. The South Sudan, they'll be looking good for this tournament. They haven't lost in the game so far. One to Congo and zero for zero to Sudan. The Perth African Nations Cup is all about bringing African communities together, building community harmony and giving people a taste of what being part of our football community in Western Australia is all about. We know that from past tournaments we've had some stars go on, we've had youngsters become A-League players, we've had youngsters become Perth Glory youth players. Like we said last year, there will be some talented players coming out of the tournament and we were spot on. Congratulations, a uh, big win for, uh, for your team? Yes, be very big win, we're looking forward to it and defending our title, so it's good to uh, be champions again. You put Congo up 1-0 very quickly in the first half, did you think uh, was, uh, the work was done at that stage? I mean, not really because the team, the opponents were very strong and they kept coming at us, so uh, they scored and we knew we had to keep on working, so lucky we got the second goal straight away. And obviously... It's <laughs> This is one of the opportunities where the community comes together from everywhere, Sudan, all the African countries, so it was very positive for the community, so great win, everybody's happy. Before we go, don't forget the charity shield match between Sorrento and Balcata this weekend at Percy Door Reserve. More next week, until then, it's bye for now.